It's actually a Carl Rogers quote, that one. But you can teach anyone. But it's an interesting quote because it makes you stop and think, is it actually possible for me to, to transmit something to you? Is it possible for me to send something from me to you? I think what Carl Rogers means by this is it's possible to create the conditions for learning to happen, but I can't actually send something from me to you. I can't transmit. And yet a lot of teaching, we act as if it's possible to transmit learning from teacher to student. And I think we need to remind ourselves that that's not how it happens. I may know lots of things, you may know lots of things, but we can't post those to our students. Our students have to find those things for themselves. Maybe we can help them, we can create the conditions, we can encourage, we can give information, but the learning is with the students. Syllabuses, schools, course books, etc. Sorry, Macmillan are all based on a fib. <laughs> and the, it, it's, it's an understandable fib. It's the fib that, uh, that we can package up learning into, into particular sized packages. We have to work with this fib. It's a necessary, entirely necessary fib. But learning is, as I mentioned already, learning is a bit messier and dirtier than that. And a course book, studying through a course book, doesn't necessarily mean that everything in that course book has been learned, or even half of what's in that course book has been learned. Schools have, to, uh, private language schools have to sell products. They have to say, come to our school and in six months' time you will learn this much, you will have moved forward this much, you will have studied this much, you will have passed this exam. And again, that's a, that's a fib. It's the fib of the product that you can buy off the shelf. It's saying that learning is like a, a can of beans in a supermarket where every can of beans is the same and you pay your money and you get exactly the product that your money pays for. But, but it doesn't work like that. We have to behave as if it works like that quite often for the schools we work for, for the institutions where we are. But we need to remember as teachers that it, it is messier, that one student may get to that result, one student may surpass that, and other students may be much slower and much, have much more problems than that. Um, Something else that took me a long time to learn. When I started teaching, I think I was I was encouraged to do lots of games and make it fun. And it took me a long time to realize that making it fun and easy doesn't actually work. The learning is in the struggle. Learning is actually quite hard work. It's not fun, it's not games. You have to sit down and you have to put brain energy into it, you have to pay attention, you have to work very hard. And I wonder if somehow we are selling a little bit of a fib to our students in saying, come to my class, we'll have lots of games and running around and doing, doing lots of exciting things. And maybe in some ways that's sort of substituting for the real work. There's a lot of real work you have to do to learn a language. And it's hard. It's not easy. There can be enjoyable parts. The whole thing can be enjoyable. But it's not a game. And I think nowadays maybe we, as a profession, we've bought a little bit too much into this idea that it can all be all be joyous entertainment, and I'm not sure it is. Um, of course, having said that, it can be very enjoyable and, and challenging. Um, quickly, a few tips about working with grammar. I've mentioned grammar briefly already with the earlier, the earlier uh, uh, books I mentioned. Um, 